Well, today, the title of my message is, We Are a Place Where It's All About More Changed Lives. We are a place where it's all about more changed lives. My daughter, Callie, uh, has been uh, diligently saving up money to buy a little motor scooter. And so it's like a, it's like a mini moped, but for like a, a 10 or 11 year old. And so she's been saving it up, finally has enough money and she buys it and she, every time we get home, she's got to hop on it and just drive it around. And we've explained to her, hey Callie, you know, when you drive it, just make sure you stay right around the house. Don't go past this house. We got a little cul-de-sac over here. You can drive it around there. And so she's always driving uh, her, her little motor scooter around. And two weeks ago, um, we needed Callie to come in. I think we had somewhere we needed to go. And um, I'm looking for her, and I can't find her in the house. And I go and look in the garage, and sure enough, the motor scooter uh, is, is, is gone. I'm like, and she's off on her scooter, which she does many a times. And so normally I just pop out the house, Callie, you know, and I'm looking around. I'm looking down the street. So I'm looking at her boundaries where she normally is. And I'm not seeing her everywhere. Normally I see her maybe, you know, pop out and driving, and I'm looking, and I'm, Callie, Callie, and I'm like, she left the boundaries. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, hoping to see her, nothing. So I'm like, all right, so I get in my car. Now I'm frustrated, right? You ever been there? You're just frustrated. You gave boundaries. So I'm, I'm she's driving around. So I'm driving around the neighborhood and I'm frustrated and I'm, you know, drive to the neighborhood park. She's not there. I'm like, maybe she went to some of her other friend's house, driving to her other friend, didn't find her there. I'm like, she is joyriding around this entire. So I'm driving around this whole neighborhood, but I can't find Callie. And at this point, my frustration has now turned into fear and worry. And I'm like, somebody has snatched my daughter. Oh, I'm about to tear this neighborhood up. <laughs> Kelly! I'm driving around. I'm looking, oh, I'm about to start knocking on every door. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I pray nobody took my daughter. Frustration has turned to fear. And I'm driving around and I'm looking and I'm just trying, I'm just looking for this purple motor scooter. Like, where is Callie? I, y'all, I'm, at, I'm about to start putting it on social media. Lord, pray. Do I need to call 911? And right before I do that, I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me just text her friend. I know her scooter wasn't outside of her house, their house, but let me just shoot a text. And so I texted dad. I'm like, hey, is Callie at your house by chance? Oh, yeah, she's here. I'm like, oh, my goodness. She was literally across the street. But see, what had happened was when she drove to their house, their garage was open. And Callie just parks her scooter in people's garages like it's her garage. Well, the dad didn't realize that he closed the garage. And so I'm driving around looking for a scooter, cannot find it everywhere. But, hey, y'all about to turn that neighborhood inside out to find my daughter because I love her and I care for her. And today, we're going to look at a parable that Jesus told about someone who lost something of value. Let's look at Luke chapter 15, verse 8 through 10. It says, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And Jesus tells a parable in Luke 15. He actually tells three of them about three different things that are lost. The verses right before the lost coin, he tells the parable of the lost sheep. And then after the parable of the lost coin, he tells the parable of the the prodigal son, a story of the lost son. And what Jesus was doing is he was driving home the point that God is more focused on lost people than he is found people. That the priority of heaven is always to reach one more person who is far from God. Heaven is always about the one who is still lost. And heaven's priority should be 
earth's priority. And at People's Church, we always want heaven's priority to be our priority. God has called us to reach people who are far from God. And as long as there is one person that needs to experience new life in Christ, we will do everything we can to reach one more. That's why we started People's Church 20 years ago, because it's all about more changed lives. Come on, everybody shout, more changed lives. It's all about more changed lives. And I want to give you three things we must do the next 20 years to see more changed lives. Three things we must do the next 20 years to see more changed lives. The first is this, is we must care about the one. We must care about the one. One of the most important messages in all three parables is how each person cared deeply about what was lost. The the shepherd, he cared deeply about the lost sheep. He left the 99 to go find the one. The father, he cared deeply. When he saw his son coming back at a distance, he ran to him and gave him a hug. The lady cared deeply about the lost coin. And in the story of the lost coin, she cared so much that she lit a lamp to search for the lost coin. See, we have to care enough to turn on the lamp in dark places. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 14 that we are the light of the world. And people who care about the lost don't hide their light. People who care about the lost, they let their light shine in dark places. In people's church, God has called us to turn on the light. Everywhere we go, turn on the light. No matter how dark it is, turn on the light. At your home, turn on the light. At your job, turn on the light. At your school, turn on the light. With your crazy family, turn on the light. At the ball game, turn on the light. At the grocery store, turn on the light. Every Sunday and Wednesday at church, turn on the light the light. And if we aren't careful, we can stop letting our light shine. We start turning off the light instead of turning on the light. Here's how we turn off our light. When Christ followers become complacent, we turn off the light. When we become so desensitized by all the sin and the wickedness and the chaos, we start thinking, it's pointless to let my light shine. I mean, what difference? My light can't make a difference at all. And I'm here to say, no, that is not the truth. Your light can make a difference, and you need to turn your light on. Some Christ followers, they turn off their light because they spend their time whining instead of shining, start complaining about the darkness, being critical about the darkness, condemning about the darkness, start complaining about how messed up this world is and all this darkness and it's messing with me and messing with my family and messing with our world. Oh my goodness, look at all this this darkness and this mess is messing with my finances, it's messing with, it's just all this darkness darkness and just everybody the world is wicked and all these wicked people they just they just going to hell and folks start sounding like the pharisees luke chapter 15 verse 1 and 2 it says now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear jesus but the pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered this man welcomes sinners and eats with them Ugh can't even believe he's having company with those kind sharing food Ugh, what is he doing what what is, oh man i can't believe muttering complaining being critical luke 19 verse 6 through 7 it says so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly this was speaking of zacchaeus another sinner and all the people saw this and began to mutter he has gone to be a guest I, of this, oh, I can only imagine what they're doing in that house. Mm-mm, what is going on? Mm-hmm. You see where Jesus went? You better be careful. That darkness is going to get him. We're complaining, critical. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 29 and 30, it says, Then Levi had a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? See, the Pharisees talked about lost people like they were some kind of creature. Oh, Jesus is hanging around with those sinners. Like they're not even people or human beings. See, when our hearts are filled with condemnation, we forget that those sinners are people that God loves. We forget that those sinners are somebody's son, daughter, brother, sister, husband, or wife. We forget that we used to be those sinners. Come on, we forget the only reason that we are no longer those sinners is not because of anything we did, but because of what Jesus did. And the Pharisees' hearts are so filled with condemnation, but Jesus, he was focused on caring for people that are far from God. Don't spend your time condemning. Spend your time caring and turn on the light. Turn on the light. Let your light shine in the dark places. Let your love and your kindness, let your smile shine. Let your serve shine. Let your compassion, your hope, your generosity, and your patience shine in the dark places. God, give us a heart that cares about the one, that cares about those that are lost. God, help us turn the light on to be light of the world and never Turn it off. To reach the one, we must care for the one. Number two, we must be committed to going after the one. We must be committed to going after the one. In Luke 15, the shepherd went after the lost sheep. The father ran to the lost son while he was a long way off. The lady searched for the lost coin. It says she lit the lamp and she grabbed a broom. She lit the lamp, and she grabbed the broom. Listen, here at People's Church, we are a broom-grabbing church. Come on, we are searching, and we are going after the law. We are a broom-grabbing church. We are going after the one. We aren't just sitting back or sitting around talking about reaching the one. We are going after the one. That's why we do outreaches so we can reach the one. That's why we do Easterland, Wild World, have free food, and carnival rides, and face painting, and petting zoos to reach the one. That's why we do giveaways, and free donuts, and friends days, and specialty coffee to reach the one, cookouts to reach the one. That's why we're doing back to the movies starting on May 29th through the whole month of June to reach one more. That's why we give hundreds and thousands of dollars every year to local missions, national missions, and overseas missions so that we can reach one more person with the good news of Jesus. We are committed to doing everything we can to reach as many people as possible. We're sweeping, we're turning on the light, and we're we're sweeping. I love how the Apostle Paul says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22 and 23. It says, to the weak, I became weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessing. We become all things to all people so that we might save some. Come on, you got to get your broom and start searching for the lost and hurting and broken people in our world. But here's what can happen. We can get fired up and be like, Pastor, I'm ready to sweep. But then there are times things can happen that can cause us to put down our broom. Let me explain. Don't, don't let selfishness stop you from sweeping. See, when we get selfish, we start making Jesus all about us. We're sweeping, but we're like, ah, I'm getting tired. I mean, I'm good. I'm saved. My family's good. I'm happy. I'm blessed. And some Christ followers start thinking church is all about them. 
Pass, sing my song. Preach me happy. Serve my kids. It's all about me. No, it's not. God reached us so that we would reach others. Found people, find people. And so you got to pick up your broom and sweep. Another reason that folks put down the broom is they get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. I would, I would get a broom and sweep, but, you know, life is just busy. Oh, Work is busy, family's busy, career, my business is busy, my kids, whoo, it's just busy with everything at school and my spouse and all, you know, with my boyfriend, my girl, we're just busy and we got activities and we're, and we got problems, we just, there's just so much going on and listen, don't get sidetracked from your greatest calling in life. We're called to turn on the light and sweep. Come on, heaven and hell, they hang in the balance. People need to encounter God's love, grace, and mercy, and God wants to use us to sweep and to seek and save, to reach one more. Another reason people put down their broom is they get satisfied. People's church don't become satisfied. It's easy to think, haven't we done enough? I mean, we got five campuses. We've seen thousands and thousands of people give their life to Jesus and get water baptized. I mean, we've given millions of dollars to missions. We've helped take care of the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. We've helped heal the hurting. We've helped thousands of addicted to find freedom. We've, we've started thousands of churches around the world. I mean, we've done enough, right? No. No, we haven't. As long as there are people who don't know Jesus, we got to turn on the light and we got to grab a broom. 2 Timothy 2.10, it says, So I am willing to endure anything. If it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. God wants us to endure anything to see more people saved. There are more people to help, more people to serve, more people to love, more people to reach. We are committed to pray to see more changed lives, preach to see more changed lives, serve to see more changed lives, give to see more changed lives. We haven't stopped and we won't stop. We're not a no church, we're not a slow church, or we're a go church, and we got the brooms, and we're sweeping and looking to reach the one more, because it's all about more changed lives. It's all about more changed lives. We will endure anything to reach one more. We aren't putting the broom away. We're not putting it in the closet. We're not putting it down. Every week, we aren't done. We're going to keep sweeping. Come on, at your work. I know sometimes you're tired and got files and all oh, that person walks in that kind of gets on your nerves, but don't put your broom down. Keep sweeping, keep loving, keep serving. Come on, don't you turn that light on. You keep that light on and you keep sweeping, looking for opportunities to share your story, looking for opportunities to invite somebody to church. God has you as your job not to put that broom down, but to keep sweeping to reach every person at your workplace. Do not put your broom down. Come on, every day you get to work, get your work broom and sweep for Jesus. Now, when you get home, you can put your work broom down. But then you got to pick your neighborhood broom up. Come on, don't you give up on that neighborhood. Come on. I know that neighbor's dog keeps pooping in your yard. And you're like, Lord, would you just take them away? But no, no, no. God wants to use you to keep sweeping in your neighborhood, to be love and light. You keep waving to those neighbors that don't wave back to you. You keep loving on them and smiling at them and talking to them. You Come on, you're looking for those opportunities for, to, to pray for them, to encourage them, to invite them to church. Every day in your neighborhood, you get that, you reach those neighborhood kids. Stop scolding at them and giving them the stank eye. Come on, love on them, welcome. Bake them some cookies in Jesus' name. Invite them to people's church. Take them back to PC Kids. Jesus is Straighten them right out. Come on, you got to just keep sweeping and sweeping in that neighborhood. You don't, you don't put that broom down. Come on, when you're with your family. Oh, yeah, you need a big broom for the family. Oh, pastor, you don't know. 
Oh, this broom getting heavy. Come on, don't you put your broom down with your family. You keep sweeping and sweeping and loving and serving and inviting and praying. Come on, God wants to use you to reach your friends, your family, at the ball games, in the grocery store. We don't put a broom down till we sleep. And when we wake up, we pick up another broom because it's all about more changed lives. It's all about the one. I'm going to sweep and reach. As long as I'm still breathing, I'm sweeping in Jesus' name. We've got to sweep. It's all about reaching one more. It's all about more changed lives. And then number three, we must celebrate the one who is found. Luke chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. It says that when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. In Luke 15, 9 and 10, it says, And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. She went house to house, I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. In Luke 15, 23, 24, the father throws a huge party and celebrates his lost son coming home. See, Luke 15, 7 says, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous person who do not need to repent. Heaven rejoices over every changed life. It's all about one more changed life. People's church is all about more changed life. We're not, we're, we're not about making you feel like a project. We're about throwing you a party. Come on, we're not about condemnation. We're about celebration. We're not about rejecting you. We're about rejoicing with you. We throw parties, we celebrate, we rejoice over every changed life. How many of you in this last year either rededicated your life to Christ or made a decision to follow Jesus here at People's Church? Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? Come on, would you celebrate? Come on, would you celebrate? More changed lives. Rejoice, celebrate. It never gets old seeing Jesus change lives. Would you give God praise for changed lives? It's all about more changed lives. It's all about more changed lives. It's all about more changed lives.